Thank you for tuning into our May 17th worship service. I am so glad that you have found your way here. It is our express desire that each one of us grow in our faith because of our time together. And that truly is a prayer that we have before and during our gathering as we meet. I am Russ Fries. I am pastor here at First United Methodist Church. And again, it is my prayer that we will be blessed by this time together. And you would have an opportunity to grow in your own faith and become more like Christ. Now at this time, we are going to go into our service. And we've asked Sue Collins if she would lead us in our liturgy this morning. So I'm going to invite Sue if she would come at this time. Good morning. This is the call to worship. Gaze into heaven and see the glory of God. <clears throat> Lift up your eyes to behold the risen Christ. God is our rock of refuge, a strong fortress. Christ leads us and guides us every day. Let us lay our troubles at Christ's feet. Let us enter the sanctuary of God that he prepares for us. Let us pray. Open your heavens to us, God. We long for the pure spiritual milk you provide so we may grow into salvation. We are your people, sisters and brothers of your chosen one. Let us this day be built into a spiritual house, a community of your faithful people. Incline your ear to us and rescue us from ourselves. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. The scripture reading today is from 1 Kings 17, 8 through 14. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go and live in the village of Sarapath near the city of Sidon. I have instructed a widow there to feed you. So he went to Sarapath. As he arrived at the gates of the village, he saw a widow gathering sticks, and he asked her, Would you please bring me a little water in a cup? As she was going to get it, he called to her, Bring me a bite of bread, too. But she said, I swear by the Lord your God that I don't have a single piece of bread in the house, and I have only a handful of flour left in the jar and a little cooking oil in the bottom of the jug. I was just gathering a few sticks to cook this last meal, and then my son and I will die. But Elijah said to her, Don't be afraid. Go ahead and do just what you said but make a little bread for me first. Then use what's left to prepare a meal for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. There will always be flour and olive oil left in your containers until the time when the Lord sends rain and the crops grow again. This is the word of the Lord. city school district um, had in its program 
to have teachers go to hospitals when children were in it to help them kind of catch up on the homework that, that was assigned to them while they were in their stay at the hospital. One of the program teachers one day went to uh, the regular teacher of this student and asked, you know, what was their teaching and what she, she, should she say to them and kind of get that information. And she supplied that we're working on nouns and adverbs. So armed with that, she went to the specific hospital, went to the room number. But she was taken aback a bit because they never mentioned that he was badly burned and in great pain. So she kind of stammered through everything, a little bit kind of caught uneasy from what she was experiencing, but nevertheless finished her lesson. The next day she arrives there and a nurse uh, caught her as she was getting down towards the room and said, ma'am, what did you do yesterday? Well, because of really how frustrate, frustrated, frustrated she was, she kind of took it as, oh, I'm sorry, and started to apologize. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to, you know, whatever it was. And the nurse said, oh, you don't understand what I mean. Whatever you said to him turned him around completely. It was as if at, at one point he was not thinking of living, that he was actually I'm resolved himself and resigned himself to die. And so now he's changed his attitude. He's fighting back and he is responding to the treatment. Um, he's as if he's, it, he has decided to live. I, I bring that story. It's a great story. Oh, let me finish it, I guess. Uh, two weeks later, the boy explained that he had completely given up hope until this teacher arrived. And he expressed it in, in this way uh, when he realized it. They wouldn't send a teacher to work on nouns and adverbs with a dying boy, would they? I, I, I like that story. I think it's great because there's so much truth to it. Here we have this unnamed widow. Her name's not even important enough to put in here. And she's in a place where she has resigned herself to die. I don't think there's a one of us who would want to be in a situation like that, but that's what she found, where she found herself in. And she was going to her plans, as, we're, as they were told, make my last meal with my son and I, eat it, and then starve to death. And um, that's where she was at. That's, that's her setting. And let me give you a little bit more background as well, if I can. Elijah, the prophet, was God's instrument in telling truth to King Ahab, uh, an evil king and the nation of Israel. Uh, it was a northern kingdom of the two kingdoms, Israel in the north and, and Judah in the south. And they had a string of 19 evil kings. I mean, you think about that. And of them all, King Ahab was the most evil of them all put together. Uh, not, not a good scenario if you lived in the nation of Israel and you were trying to be God followers. So God told Elijah to bring um, a message to the king and said, there are consequences, obviously, for the evil that you brought, and it was going to be three and a half hours of drought. And so that's where we find ourselves. Elijah, who was uh, told to be God's instrument in doing some hard things, I mean, who wants to go to an evil king and say, by the way, you're, you're evil, and, you know, try and walk out of there alive. And, um, but God took care of him, and we, we read before this how a brook was provided for him, ravens fed him, there's a miracle in itself. And then we, obviously, from this passage, Elijah shows up, and we find him being an instrument of a miracle for this lady as well, as well as God providing for her. And, and that's going to be kind of a, this reoccurring theme for us. So this woman is living in Zepareth, and there is no food. There's no hope of food. Um, it's been a drought for years, and the place where they were starting to shift from, from where they were to now Israel, they, it had dried up there just as well. There was no place for this unnamed widow to get any food whatsoever, and so she was in a dire situation and um, obviously contributed to the despair of this woman. I don't know about you, as we start talking about situations such as this, um, there seems to be a human tendency to think on those things in which we do not have. Are you with me with that? That we sometimes do that, and, and therefore I, can, I don't have this, so I, I can't do that. And, you know, there's a part of us where we do this on a regular basis, and I, I think this illustration will help a little bit. We've been about two months now in the pandemic and kind of safer at home. 
And um, there are things and probably stories that we all have. And I, I, I'd be curious if you could share, and we all could share together, what some of those stories are. And a thing that we'll hold with this, you know, five years from now, ten years from now, et cetera. And, and here's some of the things that I have heard, uh, some of the things that I experience as well, uh, where we go through that I think will be the marker for us for the 2020 pandemic. And one is not being able to see loved ones. I mean, that's huge. I mean, what do you do for Mother's Day? I was very fortunate because I'm the caregiver for my mom. So I was essential to that work and effort. So I got to see my mom on Mother's Day. But I know others didn't. Um, being able to touch people as well, that's a big deal. And not the un, un, inability to physically touch the people that you love so much um, is hard. All right, just kind of a side note on TV last night, I saw Ingenious where they had a huge plastic kind of net thing and um, arms that went through it and grandma who's not been able to hug her kids came up, walked up to the middle of it, put her arms through this plastic like a you know, antivirus person and her grandchildren came up and she got to hug them. So that was, that was very cool. But I get where that's gonna be a part where all oh, the pandemic of 2020, loved ones. And that, that was a big one. Uh, missing milestone moments. Uh, again, on TV, even last night, how people who are graduating are doing it virtually or drive-bys. And um, that's not normal for any one of us. And, and so that in itself is a, an issue and one we would probably mark. I didn't get to graduate like everybody else. I know of a young lady who is uh, postponed her wedding. Um, can't have the celebration, we'll just postpone that to a later date. Uh, a member of our own congregation died with one person in the room. Uh, that's not fun stuff, not, not at all. And so some of those milestone moments in life that you can't be of help or uh, grieving or healing or celebrating um, are part of what we're going to remember about this as well. Now, I'm not even mentioned the loss of income, the loss of jobs, uh, loss of freedom. Uh, last I checked, we're still the land of the brave and the free. And uh, we're really just kind of the brave right now and um, working on the free. Loss of even normal, normalcy. Uh, it's not been normal. And, and, and here's the part for us to ponder a bit. Even if our normal really wasn't pleasant and we would want to change normal, we still grieve at our loss at that. I, I, for a lot of us, that, that's kind of where we live in the 2020 pandemic, pandemic about our losses that we've had. Now, I, I don't want to minimize them whatsoever because they are painful, they're hurtful um, for so many of us. And I too am missing people and wishing I could see them more, including us when we come back together. I can't wait for that to happen. In fact, I, I'll make sure I, I, I caution you as well. Um, don't let me push too hard because I would do that because I miss you all. Um, but when life setting is dire, when it is hopeless, when it seems helpless, you know, those life-changing situations, I understand how that can become the focus of our life. I, I, I get it. I think we all get that part of it, and that becomes it. But our passage reminds us, and this is what I would want to make sure that you are reminded about, not forgetting about a God, and a God who is very capable. If there's anything I want for you to walk away with today is about our God who is so capable, so loving, because this is the God who, I mean, this woman, in her dire and desperate situation, is going to about to come face to face with the God of abundancy. That, that's what she's about to, to realize in truth and in life. And a God who believes in a concept that more than enough is normal for this God. A God where all needs are met. And I think you and I have to make sure that we not give up on God in these dire, hopeless, helpless situations. Because I get where our focus can be on our problems and not the problem solver. And I get that. And it's hard. And if we've given up, I think, on life as this woman has, I, I think we give up on God because of the capabilities that God has for each one of us. It's very easy to read in our passage just how little she had, and she explained it to Elijah. What, one more meal, um, that's all I've got. And, uh, you, you know, for her to process and say, 
I will share that with you. That, that in itself seems so much, and yet she is blessed and rewarded multiple times because of that. Uh, the God who is abundant blesses her, really, supernaturally says, you know what, this is going to continue on until I bring rain back. But, wow, I mean, um, that is indeed something uh, incredible, indeed. Uh, the God who gave us life knows what we don't have. And I think that's important for us to also kind of focus in on the truths that God has already shared with us. Indeed, um, we shouldn't be surprised because we read in Lamentations 3, 22, 23, the Lord's love never ends. His mercies never stop. They are new every morning. Lord, your loyalty is great. And, and that we read consistently throughout Scripture, and we see the stories, again, consistently through Scripture. And now that I am four decades in a relationship with Christ, I can say that as well, that, you know what, times my ups and downs, I have a record of God being consistent and faithful. And I hope that you are discovering that just as well. God has this way of showing up and sustaining us in the midst of life's most miserable moments. And again, we see that and read that on a regular basis. And if we really were honest and look back at those places, we could see numerous situations with God's fingerprints all over them. Indeed. I think there's another lesson other than sometimes we can forget God and we just focus on our issue. Is uh, obedience leads to abundance. We, we find that this unnamed widow is like, I mean, one meal. This is it. Okay, I'll, I'm, I'll follow through. I'll do it. Um, she did something, something not hard, not difficult per se. Obviously a leap of faith. There's no doubt about that. That was huge. But simple obedience led to her abundance. Her revelation of this God of abundance just as well. And she took these very simple steps. I, I, I do wonder at times. Um, do desperate hungry people are they more crazy than the rest of us and that what is there really to lose if i take a belief of faith i mean she's at a last meal does it make a difference if it's one day or one meal earlier or not i'm convinced that most of us because of our lack of obedience we miss out on some very wonderful rewards that god has in store for us and so i i, I would call you today and i would to do simple obedience to god almighty you, you hear me say from time to time, and it's a, it's a good statement. I don't remember who I got it from, but uh, we are educated beyond our level of obedience. And I think those are really important words for us when we really are in despair and hurting. That, okay, what has God promised? What has God said to us? And let's take those necessary steps then to be faithful and see if the promises that God gives us that even in tough situations, we can find peace. Even in tough situations, we can find hope. We can find joy. Simple obedience. And I would encourage you, continue to pray. We're, we're asked to do that routinely. Continue to give. Simply give. Believe. Fast. Serve. Worship. Prepare. Invite. And expect. I, I truly believe that that is what God asked of us, what God was asking of this unnamed widow. And I, I really believe this totally. I wonder how much we miss out on blessings, both us individually, our community, our world, because we don't think we have enough to use for God. I'm limited. I can't speak. I can't give enough. Whatever. I wonder how much we miss out because we allow our fear of the unknown uh, to stop us in our tracks. One of my memories for the 2020 pandi pandemic, I will probably take to my grave, the run on toilet paper. I, 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 I'll be honest, I still don't get how toilet paper can save you from a pandemic. I, 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 it doesn't compute to me. I wonder how much we miss as well in this world because God's people are not being obedient to what God has asked them to do. Again, you don't have to know it. You don't have to be a seminary student. You already know well enough to influence your neighbors, to be known by love to your neighbors, to be a voice of hope to your neighbors. We say that's important here. 
So I encourage us to continue to trust God's provision. Continue to trust God's promises. Trust that God always hears, always knows where we are, and always acts in the best interest of us. So I leave that with you to this day. Who knows where you could be the blessing and a miracle for someone else, or know that soon enough, you will be face to face with the God who lives in abundance. Amen and amen. This time I'm going to invite Austin up as he does our special music of the day. And um, Austin, thank you for sharing your gifts with us this morning. I want to encourage you to please send in your prayer requests or the things that you are celebrating. We do want to be in prayer with you. We really do. And, and the ones that we have mentioned uh, continue on. Be, please be in prayer for them just as well. And um, we know that people are struggling a bit. And this is going on longer than we would really want. So obviously we'll be praying for those situations. And, and for us, and this is where I'm going to start this kind of a, a new one. Please be in prayer for First United Methodist Church as we begin the opening process, just talking about it. how do we keep people safe when they arrive here. Uh, we got a lot of space, and that's a, that's a blessing. Man, are we blessed in that. But how do we do all the other parts so that people be safe? So that, that one I want you to do. So please send them in to the office, email us, so that we can be in prayer with one another and celebrate with you just as well. For this time, I, I do pray, as our kind of mission statement is, that you would live by faith. You would be known by love, and you would be a voice of hope. The world really needs it at this time. Amen and amen.